everybody, me, Joe from Boss USA. Welcome to the next episode of the Beginner Build Series. I know this series has taken a while. Uh, we got really busy around here once we started this series, but I promise the future build series are going to go a lot quicker than this one. We're not going to, we've got it all figured out and it should be good to go. On this episode, I'm going to cover how to get your top wing ready to install your servo. We're going to talk about a couple of different things as we move along. I'm going to give you some quick tips and hints. Uh, I want to remind everybody, if during any of these builds that you're having issues, please make sure you just contact us. We're more than happy to help out. One of the things I wanted to point out, so I noticed the other day that I was having some issues with my aileron stock. I did the obligatory dry fit of the stick 40 here, and I noticed that I was getting a severe list to the left. And I figured out real fast what was going on. And I wanted to cover this so that in the future, if you see this, you'll know exactly what's going on. Now, what we have is I have my right and my left aileron stock. You can see I have them marked here. And I noticed that when I had everything put together, I was getting major tilt. So after looking at it for like three seconds, I figured out exactly what was going on. So what happens is... Balsa wood comes in all kinds of different uh, grades, and those grades will weigh more or weigh less. And usually we catch this when we pack the kits, but in this case, we missed it. So I wanted to show this to you in case you run into this, then you'll understand what happened. So the right aileron stock is of a grade of balsa that's way lighter than the left aileron stock. What I have is I have a right aileron stock that is 0.5 ounces and a left aileron stock that is 1.5 ounces. So what you're going to want to make sure you do is you're going to want to make sure you balance your wing. It's not going to cause any issues with flight. Everything is going to be fine. With this airplane especially, even if you didn't go in and balance this, it would probably still fly fine. You would just need a little bit of trim to trim it out. But while you're building it, why not go ahead and fix it? So there's a couple of ways you can do that. In my case, what I'm probably going to do is I actually have an extra set of aileron stock laying around that's more in line with the right aileron. It's a lot lighter, and it's going to be a whole lot closer. But some of the things you can do to fix this issue is you can go in, and in my case, because my left aileron is way heavier than my right aileron, I could go in and I know I have a one ounce difference between the two pieces of stock. I can do a couple of different things. Number one, I can get some of the stick on weights and put a one ounce uh, section of the, the stick on weights in there. What I wouldn't do is I wouldn't rely on the uh, adhesive that comes with or comes on those uh, stick on weights. After time, those can, uh, I've experienced those coming loose, so it, it's better if you would epoxy that in. You can epoxy it in, on, in my case, I'd epoxy it in on a rib on the right wing tip to balance that out. You can also use balsa or birch or any type of scrap wood you have. All I would need in my case is one, ounces, one ounce of uh, a block that we have and just uh, glue it to a rib on the right side to make that weight. Uh, the point is, is even if you have something like that show up on your end, I hope you don't. We usually, like I said, we usually catch that. So it's, I, I wouldn't think it'd be a, a large issue, um, but you can fix it. It's easy. Just balance your wing, make sure it all sets on there good. So that make you, that makes sure you have the best flying model that you can possibly have. This airplane is actually designed for a beginner. Uh, and you want to make sure it's as close as possible so that you or whoever's going to be flying it doesn't have a lot of issues to deal with. Um, so in this episode, we're going to cover the installation of the servo bay. Uh, the next episode, we're probably going to in cover installation of the servo, getting everything lined up with the NIROD, uh, final sanding and prep. And then the episode that will finish this out is going to actually be the final prep final sanding, painting, and covering. Welcome to the next episode. We hope you enjoy it. As always, thank you very much for watching and happy building. Okay, so the next section is going to be to sheet the top section of the middle wing panel here. I'm gonna give you a little tip before we get started on this. 
since you're sheeting the top you're going to want to make sure that you don't put any glue in this area right here this is actually where you're going to be cutting out if you look at the pictures here you can see right here you're going to have to cut these wing ribs out the center wing ribs it's going to be a lot easier to do that if you don't glue it to the top sheeting here so when I put these pieces of sheeting down these are going to be the um, three, 30 seconds by 3 inch sheeting I'm going to line them up just like this but then I've also marked so what I did was I took my servo and I laid my servo out in my bay so I could tell about where I wanted to cut this off at to give myself plenty of room here and I'll line this up with the servo arm but I've marked it here so that I know about where to not put the glue so when I glue this down I can do one of two things I can glue it down and just not put any glue here so glue around all the edges and then when you turn it over after you cut this out you can always wick some thin CA along the edge on the other side to make it nice and solid you want to be careful when you cut this out that you don't damage your rib so it's going to be a lot easier if we don't put any CA on that center rib section while you're sheeting the top okay so to go ahead and get this process started I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna mark where my top of my trailing edge is gonna meet my sheeting again just like always we're gonna give it a little bit of leeway thick so you want to mark it a little bit past the point where you're gonna cut and then cut on the outside of your line because you can always sand it to get it to fit square so now that I have my mark on there I'm gonna go ahead and take my square and carry that line fully across the piece just like that And then I can go ahead and make that cut. Pretty straightforward section here. Just like that. Check it for fit. That looks like it's going to be pretty close. And I think we're going to be good to go there. So what I would do in this case, I would normally recommend to build these types of parts with the thick CA, but I'm going to show you a little trick. In this area, what I would use is thick. I would lay my bead of thick around and then I would put some kicker on the sheeting so that when I put it down it adheres quickly okay that's gonna kick off that CA you'll be able to tell that it's kicking off because you'll be able to feel the warmth through the balsa now what I would do here on the center line is I would just move it over so you've got plenty of space to get your other piece of sheeting on there it doesn't have to be exactly lined up you're gonna have just a little bit of overhang on that side and that's not gonna hurt anything you can either sand that off or cut it off later if you feel the need to but it really is not gonna hurt anything at all just to have and it's literally like uh, 330 seconds past this other rib here so you can line it up nice and straight till you get it to the uh, spot you like it make sure you check your fit all the way around I think that's gonna be pretty good so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna grab my boss USA thick CA and I'm gonna run a bead around here this thick CA is gonna give you a little bit of time to work with it so your parts don't get solidified and solid on there before you have a chance to move it around and get it where you like it 
It's not going to give you a lot of time, but it will give you a little bit more working time than the thin. Now what I've done is I've drawn this mark here, so I'm going to go ahead and put my thick on my one side here because that won't hurt anything later when I go to cut that top piece out. I'm going to go ahead and put some kicker on my sheeting and I'm going to put my sheeting in place. Now keep in mind if you do use the kicker method it is going to solidify relatively quickly. That CA is going to kick off so you want to make sure you get it where you want it before it does or then you've got to cut this piece out. Again, like we've talked about before, if you do make a mistake, it's totally fine. You can cut these pieces back out later, and it's not a big deal. Never be afraid to make a mistake. We try not to make any, but this is building. So we're going to make some mistakes, especially first getting started out. Now that I've got that sheeting piece in place, I'm going to go ahead and mark my other sheet for cutting. Again, make my mark just a little long. And again, we do that so that you have room for error. If you cut it wrong, you can always cut more or sand more. You cannot, on the other hand, put it back. That part doesn't work very good. Go ahead and use my square to set my mark just like that and then use my handy dandy cutting board again this is just a cheap either dollar store or garage sale cutting board you can get these just about anywhere they're super cheap I have three or four different sizes and I use them for all kinds of different things. They're great for this kind of stuff because then I don't have to worry about a place to cut. Go ahead and line up my Zona saw. Okay, so now the next spot in the instructions is going to be to make the bay for your servo. What you're going to do is you're going to cut out the center rib right here. So I've already got mine marked. You saw earlier in the video, I marked it off with my servo to give myself plenty of room. You want to try to make sure that you line your servo arm up with where your control rods are going to be. In this case, I'm using the nye rod spacers. Just to double check. And you're going to want to cut this bay out. So I've got my mark set right here. One of the important things that you're going to need to remember at this spot is you're going to want to make sure that when you're doing this that you support the underside. We are cutting on the bottom so the dihedral is going away from us so there's a big gap under here. So you want to make sure you grab a couple of blocks of wood, anything that you can to support the underneath structure of this wing so you don't, you don't accidentally break it as you're doing the cutting. You don't want to put the stress of the cut on the part itself. So as you can see here, I've got my Zona saw. This is uh, one of the blades that comes in the 4-in-1 set for the Zona, Zona saw available on BossUSA.com. It comes with four different blades, and I'm going to use this smaller blade to make this cut. I think that's going to make it just a little bit easier. Whatever you're comfortable with using, you can use for this spot. Keep in mind that these wing ribs are only just balsa, so the cut should be fairly easy. And this is the reason why I didn't want you to put any glue on the bottom side of this, so that when we get through this blade, or when we get through this piece, we don't have to worry about it being glued right here. This section here won't have any glue on it. And actually, I just realized that that blade is not going to be thick enough so I'm going to go ahead and switch over to my wider blade and this will give me enough the depth to get through here without having to finagle. You're going to want to make, be careful and not cut your ribs on both sides. We're only cutting the center rib. You just got to pay close attention to what you're doing 
as you're making your cut so that you don't cut stuff that you're not supposed to be cutting. I would get that almost all the way through and then stop. And then you're gonna do the same thing on the other end. Being careful that you're not cutting your adjoining ribs and also being careful that you're not cutting your sheeting. There you go. Now what that's going to do is that's going to give me room to come in here on the next step and mount my servo. My servo is going to mount in that position right about there. What I'm probably going to do for me, because I want to make sure that this is lined up relatively close, is I might put a little bit of a spacer. Actually, no, I think that might actually be good. I was going to put a spacer under it. If your servo is a little shorter than what I'm using here, you can put a little bit of a spacer here. But I think that's going to be good to go. Now what I'm going to do at this point is because I've already glued all this in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my thick CA and I'm going to put in a little bit of a fillet around that area there just to strengthen it up a little bit. Again, I don't think it's something that's 100% necessary, but I also like to make sure that that's going to be nice and strong because the other side of that sheeting that you see there is going to be where all of the torque from the servo is and also where the rubber bands are going to come across. So I'm just going to go ahead and run a slight little fillet down here just to give this a little bit of added strength. Again, if you don't want to use this step, you don't have to. It's not really going to be an issue for most models, but I just like to make sure it's a little bit stronger. That's going to match up my flying style because with this one, I'm sure it's, it's going to be used for demos. And I want to make sure it's nice and solid through there. I'm going to give that a few minutes to set up. Make sure that I'm not gluing anything down that I don't want to. And then we'll move on to the next step, which is going to be actually installing the servo. So I made a mistake here. I got a little bit of ahead of myself earlier in the build. So I wanted to show you this. This next step is going to involve mounting the servo. And I'm going to have to install some hardwood mounts on both sides of the servo so that I could use the blocks to mount the servo on and it's going to be easier to do that properly if this sheeting is not here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you I always talk about um, it's just wood if you make a mistake you can go back and fix it so I want to show you that here as well I know we've done that a couple of times during this build but that's the whole point so I'm going to cut this sheeting. I got a nice sharp number 11 hobby blade. I'm going to bring it right over to the ribs on both sides. I'm going to pull that piece out. I'm going to do the same thing in the center. I'm going to run my hobby blade right along that rib. Again, with this being wood, especially with this being balsa, these types of mistakes are going to happen as you build. It's perfectly fine. You're able to go back in here and correct these types of mistakes and not cause yourself a lot of grief. This mistake is literally going to set me back maybe 10 minutes in my whole time for my build. And once I get it done, you're not even going to be able to tell we made the mistake. I will say, make sure you follow along the instructions very good. There were some pictures in this manual that I saw that I followed 
but the pictures got a little bit ahead of themselves, which is fine. That's going to get corrected. I just wanted to make sure we pointed it out. For those of you that have already got your kits, you're probably going to see the same thing. Now, what I've got is I've got this little piece of sheeting on each wing rib. All you have to do is come along that with your hobby blade and slowly cut it out. You want to make sure that you're not cutting your rib. You can see along the edge where it uh, hits the rib and you just want to kind of go along that edge. Just like that. Same thing for the center. Please be very careful using these hobby blades. They are very sharp and I know lots of folks that have gotten injured. So make sure you don't try to do too much at a time. Just do a little bit. And as long as your blade is sharp, this type of repair is not going to take you very long to correct. One of the other things that you can do is bring in your Zona saw. If you're having trouble getting through the glue, I actually glued this piece of sheeting down pretty good. And I can come right along the top edge of that rib to kind of break that glue up a little bit. And then I can come back in with my hobby knife. Again, these types of mistakes are going to happen. That's not something that you got to really be worried about. Obviously you want to try not to have to go back and forth a lot when you're doing these. But I left this in here just so you can see that any mistake that you make is very easily corrected. A little bit of time, a little bit of patience, and you'll be able to get that back down to where it needs to be so that when you resheat it, you won't have any problems getting your new sheeting down. Just like that. And I take my sanding block. Sand that all down. I actually think that center section is going to need a little bit more. seems like the wing ribs are going to be good. And then when we resheat that, it'll be just like new. A lot of the people that are following along have asked along the way, what do I do if I make a mistake? And that's exactly why I'm leaving this in the video so that you can see what you can do. Okay, I think that's going to be pretty good. You can bring in your sanding block and sand it down just a little bit more if you think you need to. And then you can move on to the next step. Okay, so now the next step is going to be to mount the servo. And I've got my quarter by three eighths uh, hardwood servo mount pieces here. And I have my servo. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place my servo in about where I'm going to want it. I think about there it looks good. Now, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to place the hardwood strip right along the edge of the servo. You don't want it to be super tight because then later if you need to replace the servo it's going to be a lot harder to get out of there. And what you can do is you can hold it with your other finger and make your mark to let yourself know 
where that's going to be. Hang on to the servo. Do the other side. You want to try to make sure your servo moves as little as possible. This doesn't have to be exact. You want to get it as close as you can for whatever servo you're going to use. And remember what side you mark on. For this step, I always make sure that I mark on the inside. I've got a little CA right there, and I'm going to show you a quick little tip while we're doing this. So what I've got is I've got a clothespin. And I've taken the clothespin apart and I've actually 3M adhesive some sandpaper. Okay, this gives me a nice thin little piece of sandpaper that I can use for this kind of thing. I can come in here and sand down. There's just a little bit of CA right there that's going to be in my way. And I can come here with this and I can sand it down. And now it's going to be good. So all, again, all that is is just a clothespin. I've taken the clothespin apart and I've, I've glued some uh, sandpaper to the back of it. I have these in all different grits and all different sizes and they're really nice for having a nice little sanding block. Okay, so now that I think I've got my marks where I want them, I'm gonna bring my hardwood balsa and remember I marked on the inside of the piece going to mark them just a little bit long. Going to do the same thing on the other one. Again, remembering that I marked on the inside of the piece. Make my mark. And just like every other time, I'm going to use my combination square. To bring my mark over. Same thing on this piece. So what I always like to do with this is just double check that my mark is where I want it before I make my cut. Do the other side the same way. Should be good. Now I can take my Zonosol and make my cut. Hang on to those little pieces of scrap from the end of the hardwood. We're going to need those for the rest of our servo mount. A lot of times what I find is helpful with these builds is to go a little bit ahead in the instructions. It's always a good idea to go through the entire instruction manual. I know nobody likes to do that, but it really does help as you move forward. If you've got some kind of an idea where things are going to go and how they're going to go together. So when you get to those steps, you don't make any mistakes or minimum mistakes, I should say. So I'm going to go ahead and check my fit here. It's going to be just a little bit long. So what I'm going to do is on this end, there's a gap under here underneath these two Charlie and edge pieces. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this lined up and I'm actually going to cut this off a little bit more so that I get a good fit. Don't want to force it in there because I don't want to break my uh, trailing edge. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make a mark. I'm going to actually cut a little notch in the end of this so that it fits just a little bit under the trailing edge too. That doesn't really hurt a thing. So you don't want to cut all the way through. And actually what might be a better 
thing for this portion is to use a Dremel. If you don't have a Dremel tool handy, you can cut that by hand. You can see all I did was put a little angle on the end of it so that when I bring it up, it actually fits just a little underneath my piece of trailing edge there. And I can line this up and make sure it's where I want it to be. You don't want to get above your piece on the front there because you're going to sheet over the top of this. So you want to make sure that's nice and flush. I think that's actually going to work pretty good. Now the servos in this model aren't going to take a lot of abuse. It is a trainer model. So I'm not real concerned because it is going to, these servo mounts that we're making are kind of going to float a little bit in there. So there's going to be space underneath of them. If you're concerned with that, you can always cut some pieces and build a little block for it to set on. But I really don't think it's necessary. And that should be good about right there. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take just a teeny little bit of thin and I'm just going to put this where I want it and I'm just going to tack glue it so that I can check my fit before I glue everything together. So I'm just going to put a little drop of thin on here just enough to hold it so that I can let it go and it'll stay. Maybe. If you just give it a little tack, it'll be easy to move if you need to. So in my box from my build over here, I have an extra piece of scrap hardwood. And usually when I'm doing these builds, I hang on to all the little pieces like this. A lot of people will throw them directly away. I like to try to use up the entire kit. And even once I get done with the build, I have a large box that I put scrap in. And when I need a small piece, I just got to go over and grab it. And I've got it. And I don't have to waste wood. So what you can do here is if you can line this up. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a little spacer here just to give this servo mount a little bit more solidity. So I've got my mark made. And I'm going to use my combination square to bring my mark across where I can see it. And I'm just going to make a little spacer here. For me, this airplane is going to get lots and lots of demo flights, and I want to make sure this servo bay is nice and strong. What you can do is bring that up to where you get a nice snug fit, and you want to make sure that it's not going to be in the way of your servo. It won't take a lot of punishment because this on the other side is just going to be 332nd sheeting. It'll just give it a little extra strength. If you wanted to cut it a little bit larger, you could bring it back here and uh, put it there against this hardwood. This would be your dihedral brace. And you could bring it back here and put it there just to give that piece a little bit more strength. And actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I believe that's what I'm going to do too. It's got a strong enough fit there. But I think it'll work fine. I'm going to check it with the other side. Should be fairly close. Yeah. That actually fits just a teeny little bit better on that side. So I'm going to use this piece for that side. And I'm going to cut another piece for the left side. So again, I'm going to hold this in place. Making sure that I'm lined up with that mount because I don't want it getting in the way of the servo installation. 
a little bit of thin. That'll set up in no time. I'll go ahead and cut another piece for this side. I'm going to cut it just a little bit longer this time. So that'll be a little bit more snug. Again, cut to the outside of your lines when you draw your lines. And then if you need to sand it down to get it to fit better, you can always sand a little bit off. See that? I cut a little bit long, which is fine. It doesn't quite fit. But I know all I have to do is get out my sanding block. And I can sand it down a little bit of a time until it fits. Again, you don't want to do a lot. Just a little bit at a time. You want to try to hold it as square as you can. And there I've got the fit I want. Just like that. Again, this isn't going to give it a ton of extra strength because it's got 332nd sheeting on the other side. So it's not like it's hardwood or anything, but it is going to give you a little extra strength on that servo mount. This isn't a step that's in the manual. This is just something that I saw that it thought it might need. And that should be good to go. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave that have some time to dry because the next step I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to cut a little notch in these servo mounts so that my nye rod can come through. Now for those of you that don't want to use the nye rod, that's perfectly okay. I'm actually going to do another video series on this same model and I'm going to show some of the mods that you can do. I wanted to build this one straight to the plans um, and then we'll show you some of the mods. Uh, like uh, for instance I'll show you how to do the servo mounted or the wing mounted servos. We'll talk about the uh, tail dragger option. We'll talk about the electric conversion option. There's all kinds of things that you can do to make this model your own. We'll also talk about on the other version the um, wing bolt version instead of the rubber bands. I like that option a lot actually. Um, I think it's going to hold up a lot better. The rubber bands a great beginner vehicle start for folks because if they're starting out and they're truly a beginner the rubber bands will break instead of the wing but if you are a little bit more experienced of a flyer and you want to have just a nice little sport flyer sunday slow flyer the wing bolt idea is a great idea you just use nylon wing bolts now one of the steps i don't want to forget to do while i'm standing here is i want to come in and i want to sand this down with the angle of my trailing edge and the reason why I want to do that is because I'm going to come through here in a few minutes and I'm going to sheet this and I want to make sure that I don't have a lot of uh, issues when I go to start sheeting it this should all line up fairly close but when I put these servo mounting blocks in they won't match up to the trailing edge so you're going to want to make sure you come through and sand those down so they match <laughs> 